there's a blessing that comes when you decide that what you have, what you know, what you're good at, you are actually going to sell to the people. You're going to help them out by selling it to them. It is a blessing to sell, right? Shabbat shalom, y'all. Um, as you all know, you know, I'm a podcaster, but I do, you know, I make no bones about um that I do honor the Sabbath, you know, for uh, honor to Ra. So I don't work on the Shabbat. Uh, and so as I'm publishing this on Shabbat, you know, I really wanted to, you know, uh, you know, share something, you know, related to the scripture or the Bible or whatever. And um, you know, I was, you know, I came across a scripture in Proverbs uh that talks about selling. And it actually talks about selling as a blessing. It didn't talk about giving stuff away as a blessing. You know, I know conventional wisdom oftentimes people are, you know, are scared to sell. They feel like they're taking advantage of someone. You know, they sell to somebody when they need something or they want something. Or just everything should just be given away. Um, but, you know, we in business, uh, number one, we can't afford to do this because it's our livelihood. But uh, it's good to know that there's a, a Bible, biblical backing uh, for what we do. You know, if you think about Solomon, the richest, wisest man, um, according to the Bible, who ever lived, um, he he said something about about selling that's important. And, you know, instead of me just reading, I'm going to go ahead and show it, uh, show it on the screen, right? Because you know, it it, it I think it bears, um, you know, looking at. It. And so, what it says in Proverbs chapter 11, and I'm going to show it right there. Proverbs chapter 11, 24. Um, what it says is. The people will curse him who withhold, withholds grain. And it's talking about um, in this scripture, you know, like if you just read Proverbs chapter 11, it talks a lot about just uh, situations, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, business and things of that nature. But in this situation, um, you can assume and maybe there's other scriptures to back it up that uh, it's talking about in the time of famine, when people actually need something, you know, because it's a curse on him who withhold grain, you know, and that grain is something that is even a basic necessity. So a basic necessity, even more so, Things that are, you know, luxury or good to have. Um, it's not good to, to withhold them because, you know, you create a deficit, you create desperation um, and things of that nature. So if you have something, it's good to make it available. But what he didn't say was he should give it away. He didn't say it should just be handed out to whoever wants it whenever they want it. Right. But it actually says, I'm going to go to the, to the next part of the scripture, it says, but if he sells it, blessings will be on his head. You know, and then some uh, scripture says people will bless him. You know, when it talks about something in the head, most of the time it's talking about coming from someone who's directly affected by it. So what it's saying is in a time when people are in need, if you have what they have, what, what is in need, of course, you should not hoard it. Of course, you should not just keep it to yourself, but you should sell it and they'll bless you for it. And of course, not just blessing you with, you know, uh, the money that they give you, but it's a blessing. Like, you know, how many times? When you go to a place and you buy something, tell people thank you. You know, there's something internal with us that recognizing that recognizes that buying something, you know, somebody providing a good or service that you want and need and you paying for it is it, worth it to you internally. And you know, one thing we as business people have to make sure that we understand is that you know uh, we're not to take advantage of people. And you know, in in Proverbs chapter eleven, it actually starts off talking about not taking advantage of people. So this is not what this is about. It's not about jacking up prices or price gouging like it happened before. You know, we're talking about, you know, still doing fair trade. You know, one of the good things about if we actually had a free market uh, system was that, you know, uh, that in these situations, you know, where it is a need, then, you know, fair trade will be happening and prices would not be gouged. You know, if the people's money go down and prices naturally go down because of what the market can stand. But that's all economics and things of that nature. I'm really just talking about the scripture right here. So like I can say, it said the people will curse him with, who with, who withholds grain, but they but if he sells it, blessings will be on his head. Meaning that if you are providing a good or a service, I'm really talking about. I'm talking to those of you who are entrepreneurs, those of you who are salespeople, those of you who have goods and services, um, whether they be necessities, whether they, whether they may be uh, uh, good to have, whether they are luxuries. You know, uh, doing things that help people, you know, whether they, whether it actually helps them because they need it or they helps it because they just want it. You know, sometimes, you know, that feeling of having something 
that you like, that you love, you know, tasting a good dessert or eating good food or, you know, looking good or feeling good, all of that. Um, so somebody providing that opportunity for you, it is a blessing. So as you are providing those opportunities for people, know that it is a blessing. That's why people give testimonials. That's why people write good Yelp reviews. That's why people do those things. That's a blessing to you because you've sold them something that they wanted, they needed, they desired, right? So feel good about that. So as you're selling, as you're going out selling your goods, your service, I want to encourage you that you are doing a blessing for these people as long as what you're giving is a good thing. Now, let's go even deeper into it. And like I said, oh, just so y'all know, I ain't nobody's preacher. You know, so I was raised in a good in a good ministry. So, you know, I do, you know, know how to look at, at the Bible. And I look at it from a very, um, you know, pragmatic standpoint, as well as a spiritual standpoint. Like, how does it relate to life today? And, you know, we could talk about, I really could talk about scripture all day long. Um, but yeah, so anyway, uh, moving forward as, as you know, I, you know, we, I look for a, an example of it in, in the Bible. Like, okay, where was the time when people were in need and somebody sold something? Um, I'll give you one guess. It was a Genesis. And if you go and you look in Genesis and the story of Joseph, remember Joseph. Now, I'm, I'm going to give you some background before I should talk about the, script, the, the, the actual scripture itself in Torah. And I'm not saying that it's a law that you have to sell. I'm not saying Torah says that. There may be somebody, you know, who could, you know, point out in the scripture where it says you must sell. You cannot give away. Because I know it is good to give away. So, but that's not what we're talking about right now. But um, if you look at Joseph, he was somebody who was raised. Uh, you know, following the, the laws, you know, like, he, you know, his grandfather was Moses, right? <laughs> I mean, great grandfather was, I mean, not sorry. You know what? Mm, almost sounded stupid. Maybe you need to edit this part out. I mean, that part out, but his great grandfather was Abraham, Abraham. And, you know, Abraham was selected because he would follow God's law. So he is one, he was the one, excuse me, that was raised by God's law. And he lived his life even by prophecy. You know, you know, like the, the prophecy, you know, that came in his dreams, you know, about who he would be. So he was one who followed God. He walked up rightly. You know, even when he was tempted, he did the right thing. So, you know, this is a man that we, you know, we could probably all agree was a very upstanding citizen, not just an upstanding citizen, but a righteous person. What would he do in the situation where there was a need, where people had needs, where it was rough? It was hard out there. You know, and, and, and I mean, even in a situation of famine where there was nothing, what did he do? We know the story. Pharaoh had the dream. Joseph came up, he interpreted the dream, and he gave wisdom. This is what you do. During the seven years of plenty, you gather up, you gather up everything, you know, gather the grain, you know, store it up, store it up, gather it, gather it, gather it. It's just a withholding, withholding because it's plenty. Everybody can get it. So it's not withholding. You save it for those good, you know, the, the, the good years. From the good years, it's when the bad years come. So what did he do when the bad years came? Let's look at what the scripture says, right? Can't make this up, people. Don't try to. So as I click it, I got to get my mouse there. Bam. Genesis chapter 41. It says, the famine was all over the earth. But then Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold food to the Egyptians, since the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all countries came to Joseph to buy grain because famine was severe throughout the earth. So not only did he sell it to everybody all over the earth, he sold it to the people that were around him, his own people. And he even was selling it to his brothers. Let's not forget that. Yeah, they had a little bit of beef, you know, some stuff went down, you know, had to get past some stuff, but he was still going to sell it to him. Let's be real. It was, and you know what? All the people came, they didn't come, all the countries that came here, they didn't come to conquer them. They didn't come for beef to come wreck. Nah, what they did was they came to buy. So he sold the food to the Egyptians, people that had been gathering it, like he sold it to them. Since the family was with it. So he didn't withhold it, but he sold it to him. Why do you sell? Why why not just give it away? Maybe it's because if you just give it away, people don't appreciate it as much. They figure they can come back any old time. They can be more wasteful with it. 
all of that type of stuff. One thing about selling is it helps people to understand that, you know, you have to appreciate this because, you know, as long as you have enough to buy and sell, you know, you, you make sure that you, you know, you, you're proportioning it out right and all that, especially if it's something that you need. You know, and of course, we're not talking about just letting people starve. They don't have like that's not what I'm talking about. Like, don't read more into what I'm saying than what I'm saying. What I'm saying is what I'm looking at in the scripture, in the first book of the Bible, the first time it talks about a famine, the first time it talks about things being scarce, the first time it talks about stuff being hard for people. What was the solution? To sell. Now Again, I'm not talking about price gouging. I'm not talking about lobbying to keep your stores open while other people's are closed. I'm talking about making sure, you know, it, we, we, you know, stuff is out there. Like, I ain't, ain't talking about that. But what I am talking about is in a, you know, in a, in a marketplace when people need something, selling it. How do you think so many small businesses boomed during the COVIDity a, a few years ago? Like, let's not, let's not, let's, you know, things change. It was, and, and, and you know what? People were even selling information that was needed. They had information. They didn't hoard it. They would keep it for themselves. They started selling information. So many consulting programs, podcasts, all that stuff blowing up because people recognized there was a need, a desire, a want, and it was a good thing to be selling. So that's all I'm saying. I'm just talking about what's in the Bible, like I said. You know, that there's a blessing that comes when you decide that what you have, what you know, what you're good at, you are actually going to sell to the people. You're going to help them out by selling it to them. You know, when I talk about in my programs, how we do beta testing and, uh, of our products and we don't give it away because, you know, there's a certain amount of appreciation that people have when they pay for something that they don't necessarily have when you give it to them for free. So be blessed by selling. Shabbat shalom, y'all. I'll see y'all Monday. Peace.